Salam Tanat, Inayis Tilin. Once again, this is Aras Yadinos Tafari, Wendem Yadin. And we want to introduce some of the recently published um, books, some of the recently published books of the Line of Judah Society. As we mentioned in the last video, this one, the Queen of Sheba and her only son Minyamlik, which is a translation of the Kubra Neges, is now available. This is a complete English translation of the famous Ethiopian work, the Kubr Neges, the glory of kings, of the kings of Ethiopia, of the Solomonic lineage, compiled by an Ethiopian priest who translated into Ge'ez, the liturgical and holy language of the Ethiopic Church, in and about the 6th century A.D., and this right here is based upon much older material, mainly in Coptic, the language of ancient Egypt. The Kibra Neges is a remarkable mixture or fusion of pre-Masoretic biblical texts, Hebraic legends, and African Judeo-Christian traditions, some historical and some of a mythic quality derived from the Old Testament manuscripts and the latter African rabbinic writings and from Egyptian, both the Kamo Semitic and Hebraic Christian traditions, Arabian, Mohammedan, and indigenous Ethiopian sources. This is a must. Now, in our former copy that was published by the African um, Publication Society, which you can see is well-worn, so we were happy to get a copy as well of this very historical work. We would scan every little bit of detail, especially you know when you're hungry for the half of the story that hasn't been told. You'll scan every every bit of detail. And in this particular book, this book was advertised. I don't know if you can get a, a good look at this right here. Israel's Debt to Egypt by Edward H. Sugden. For years we were looking for this particular book, Israel's Debt to Egypt, because many have spoken about the connection between Israel of the Bible and ancient Egypt. So, when we finally came across a copy of Israel's Debt to Egypt, I think it was on perhaps the Jordan Maxwell site, and we had to pay, I don't know, five, ten or so dollars to download a PDF copy. Now, this version of it that we were able to get our first access to um, was retyped, and some of the pictures and photos and other things were scanned. And even though it wasn't well um, retyped, it wasn't retyped very well, still, when you are hungry, you know, you will eat. And we ate of that. Over the years of studying that particular um, manuscript, we decided that it was necessary to have a new printing of this hard-to-find ancient work. In fact, we looked on Amazon, on the Amazon.com for the book as well. Perhaps someone had a copy that they would let go for not too much. The only copy that we saw available of this particular book, Israel's Debt to Egypt, was about 300 pounds, 200 to 300 pounds. Now, pounds, of course, is the English money, and sometimes it's, it's much more than American dollars. So if it was 200, that would have been more than $400. If it was 300, that would have been more than $600. And we said, wow. How is this old historic book that was published around 1920s and the 1920s, 28 to be exact, how is it not available? So it made us even more curious because in our former copy of The Queen of Sheba and Her Only Son Minulet, that was published by the African Publication Society and by um, forward by um, Dr. G.K. Osei. He seems to have been responsible for a couple of very important um, Rastafari and African and Ethiopian documents, bringing them and putting them into circulation. And we give thanks and praise. Do not know much about Dr. G.K. Osei, but it was because of 
his printing and, and the society known as the African Publication Society that we were able to get a copy of this Queen of Sheba and her only son Minyalik, the Wallace Budge uh, translation. And as we mentioned in it, it had an advertisement for this particular book. And so finally we were able to find a manuscript copy of that book. Well, we've labored over the past perhaps month or two to try to restore the book, at least the manuscript, to a new edition and a, and a new printing for this present generation and also in certain areas to annotate as well as to add certain pictures and graphics that can help to bring out what the writer and the author, Edward H. Sugden, had originally intended and some of the information that wasn't available in his particular time. I think he did a really good work for I and I. Not as uh, um, Macy did. Macy was more overt about the African relation, but kind of tongue-in-cheek, Ed Edward Sugden basically was pointing out that there's an Egyptian and thus an African connection. There were certain writers such as Macy and we find in this particular document such as Sugden. So much ado, you know, about that, some of the background. But now we have our revised edition. This is the revised edition. We call it the black cover edition under the category of Egyptology, African Studies, and Judaism. Now, this particular book that we now have available, go to www.lojsociety.org, Israel's Debt to Egypt by Edward H. Sugden was originally, it was originally published in 1928 by the Epworth Press in London, and it's written in English. And as far as we know, this is one of the few, if only, publications of this book that is currently available. And with the additional footnotes, annotations, and pictures that we have added to this new printing and this revised edition, it is well worth your time, you understand, and your mind to get a copy of this new publication and this new printing. But to give you a little bit of background on it from some of the back notes here, that um, the revised and the new and revised edition published by the line of Judah Society of His Majesty contains additional commentary and illustrations along with publisher's notes by yours truly, in a Arasia Dinos, Tefari. The book explores the historical contacts between Egypt and Israel, especially the influence of Egypt on the religion of Israel, i.e. language, literature, arts, and crafts. Moses, the lawgiver, was educated in Egypt. It is stated that he was, quote, learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Moses possessed an excellent knowledge of the Egyptian religion. As Wallace Budge even so said, quote, the depth of his knowledge of Egyptian magical religious ritual is proved by the closeness with which he followed it in constructing the tabernacle and in the regulations which he drew up concerning offerings the equipment of the tabernacle, and the official dress of the priest, end quote. The influence of Egypt on the religion of Israel is described in detail by Wilkinson and H.B. Cook. Wilkinson has stated that, quote, many of the religious rites of the Jews bear a striking resemblance to those of Egypt. And here is a document that originally was published in 1928 that barely has seen the light of day ever since. And when you get an opportunity to read and to study this, you will recognize why this book has been suppressed 
for so long. And once again, the lion of the tribe of Judah has broken that chain. And I and I give thanks and praise to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if knowledge is power, then we deduce that lack of the same is virtually tantamount to slavery of the spirit, soul, and in its due course, the body. History bears witness to this. It is without controversy. In order to remedy this current, quote, lack of information, end quote, that too often leads to an increase of ignorance, error, and envy, we have decided it a priority to officially reprint and republish some of the various texts, books, and manuscripts from our archives and collection, many of them for the very first time. The bulk of these books have not seen the light of day since they were originally printed by their initial authors and respective printing presses. Often only a limited run of copies were formally put into circulation to begin with mostly exclusively deposited in university libraries, scholarly archives, and private collections. Well, this particular one from I and I own private collection and with additional commentary, annotation, and illustration is once again available. So my brothers and sisters, get your copy of Israel's debt to Egypt and learn the half of the story that they've suppressed until now. This is now available www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books link and the books tab. Shalom. Rastafari.